Hello everybody, welcome back to the Real BBC, Brad's Book Club. Today we'll be continuing on our read-through of the Holy Bible, picking back up at Deuteronomy something. We finished at 711, so at 712. God will honor his covenant. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swore unto thy fathers. And he will love thee, and bless thee, and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb, and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, and thy wine, and thine oil, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep, and the land which he swore unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be a male or female barren among you, or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all, which will lay upon them all that hate thee. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eyes shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a snare unto thee. In Gunyar, snaring. If thou shalt say in thine heart, These nations are more than I, how can I dispose them, dispossess them? Thou shalt not be afraid of them. But, sh but shalt well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt, the great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs, and the wonders, and the mighty hand, and the stretched out arm, whereby the Lord thy God brought thee out. So shall the Lord thy God do unto all the people of whom thou art afraid. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them, until they that are left, and hide themselves from thee, be destroyed. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them. For the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. Israel will conquer nations, and the Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee by little and little. Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. But the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee, and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction, until they be destroyed. <laughs> so it's not law for all people in here. <laughs> And he shall deliver their kings unto thine hand, and thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. There shall no man be able to stand before thee, until thou hast destroyed them. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. So we can take the little girls for virgins, but we can't take their drip. Seems a little strange. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it. For it is a cursed thing. Sensor abhor. Sensorality abhors. Remember God's care in the wilderness. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee, and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Remember how God led us in the wilderness. God condemned us to the wilderness because we, we didn't abide by his laws. It's almost like it's a bunch of different writers and interpreters in the story. Definitely not that. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, Neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know, that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. The ra thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to fear him. There are consequences for your actions. God has provided a good land. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, and the land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines, and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, ol oil, oil, olive, and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. You dig brass? Don't you weld brass? Isn't brass an alloy? I don't know. I'm metallurgy and up to speed. 
When thou hast eaten an, an artful, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Israel warned not to forget the Lord. Yep, but every other verse. But beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied. Oh, like and subscribe. Get mul mul gold multipliers. Triple extra money. Buy this stock. And all that thou hast is multiplied. Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine ear, My power and thy might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers, as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that ye shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. Israel to possess the land. Hear, O Israel, thou art to pass over Jordan this day, to go in to possess nations greater and mightier than thyself, cities great and fenced up to heaven, a people great and tall, the children of the Anakims, whom thou knowest, and of whom thou hast heard say, who can stand before the children of Anak? Understand. Therefore this day that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee as a consuming fire he shall destroy them and he shall bring them down before thy face so shalt that thou drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord hath said unto thee speak not thou in thine heart after that the Lord thy God hath cast them out from before thee saying for my righteousness the Lord hath brought me in to possess this land but for the wickedness of these nations the Lord doth drive them out from before thee which wickedness? We're raping kids, we're taking kids, we're destroying whole nations. What wickedness? Not for thy righteousness or for thy uprightness of thine heart dost thou go to possess their land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out before thee. Oh, we've got to dehumanize them, right? We're going to war. Oh, they're wicked. And here in our story again, we take, we take the little, little girls for, uh, as virgins, but if they've been with any man, we slaughter. So yeah, those people, those bad ones over there. Yeah, okay. The Lord thy God doth drive them out before thee, and that he may perform the word which the Lord swore unto the fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hakub. Understand, therefore, that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness, for thou art a stiff-necked people. Those stiff necks. Israel's rebellion remembered. Remember and not forget how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until yea came unto this place, they have rebellious have been rebellious against the Lord. Also in Horeb, ye provoked the Lord to wrath, so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you. God gives Moses two stone tables. Again, this is like the third time we've done this one. When I was gone up into the mount to receive the, the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant which the Lord made with you, and I made with you. Not not He didn't give you the tablets. He made with you. You rationalize something. You reason something. They maybe carved it into some stone. Then I abode in the mount forty days and forty nights. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. Again, this is striking me as Moses' account, or at least someone writing for Moses. And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone, written with the finger of God. And on them was written, according to all the words, which the Lord spake with you unto the, in the mount of, out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. And it came to pass at the end of forty days and forty nights, that the Lord God, the Lord gave me the two tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant. But we did that twice. We broke the first set of stones. Go read it back in whatever part that was. The golden calf. This shit again, Aaron. <laughs> and the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from hence. For thy people which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They are quickly turned aside out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten image. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. 
Let me alone, that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven. And I will make them make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. So I turned and came down from the mount, and the mount burned with fire. And the two tables of the covenant were in my two hands. And I looked, and behold, ye had sinned against the Lord your God, and had made a molten calf. Ye had turned aside quickly out of the way which the Lord had commanded you. Moses breaks tables of stone. Why are we repeating the same story again? It just has to be multiple scholars writing the same thing out of the different tribes, and then just collect it into a book. And I took the two tables and cast them out of my hands and break them before your eyes. And I fell down before the Lord, as at first, forty days and forty nights. I did neither eat bread nor drink water, because of all your sins which ye sinned, and doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. For I was afraid of the anger of the hot displeasure, wherewith the Lord was wroth against you to destroy you. But the Lord hearkened unto me at, this, at that time also. And the Lord was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him, and I prayed for Aaron also at the same time. And I took your sin, the calf which they had made, and burnt it with fire, and stamped it, and ground it very small, even until it was as small as dust. And I cast the dust thereof into the brook that descended out of the mount. From dust we were made to dust we shall return. This strikes me as, as action, actually like a memoir account of actual Moses. And again, the other, the other ones, this one, the, the first person use of I. But again, it just has to be multiple scholars writing about the same history and just collect it into a book. Times of rebellion, remember, that's the only reason I can think of why we do the same thing over and over again multiple times. And at Taborah, and at Massah, and at Kibroth Hatavah, ye provoked the Lord to wrath. Likewise, when the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land which I have given you, then ye rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God, and ye believed him not, nor hearkened to his voice. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. Thus I fell down before the Lord forty days and forty nights, as I fell down at the first, because the Lord had said he would destroy you. I prayed therefore unto the Lord, and said, O Lord God, destroy not thy people of thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed through thy greatness, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Remember thy servants Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look not unto the stubbornness of this people, nor their wickedness, nor their sin. See, look there, we're wicked. the Israelites are wicked too. <laughs> Lest they live again. Moses is the leader. He goes up. He's rationalizing things. He says, the Lord's going to destroy you. Well, if you don't have like discipline and order, and you're out in the wilderness, you're just going to go hungry and die. So it's, it's really just rationalization and multiple accounts of the same history. Lest the land whence thou broughtest us out say, because the Lord was not able to bring them into the land which he promised them, and because he hated them, he hath brought them out to slay them in the wilderness. Yet they are thy people and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest out by thy mighty power and by thy stretched out arm. Oh, yep, here it is again. The second set of tables of stone. At, the at that time the Lord said unto me, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount and make thee an ark of wood. And I, I will write on the tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest, and thou shalt put them in the ark. And I made an ark of shittim wood. Got to, got to load up on them shittim wood. Long shittim wood futures. And hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and went up into the mount, having the two tables in mine hand. And he wrote on the tables, according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments, which the Lord spake unto you in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them unto me. So he says, I'm going to write them. God's not going to write them. I'm going to write them. Moses is going to write them down after realizing things and rationalizing them. And I turned myself and came down from the mount. Uh, did I skip something? No. 10.5. And I turned myself and came down from the mount and put the tables in the ark which I had made. And there they be, as the Lord commanded me. The journey continues. The children of Israel took their journey from Beeroth of the children of Hakan, Jakan, and Moserah. There Aaron died, and there he was buried. So Aaron died at Moserah. I've got to look up a map to figure out where these places are. And Eleazar, his son, ministered in the priest's office in his steed. From thence they journeyed unto Gudogda. 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 And from Gudogda to Jotboth, a land of rivers and waters. And that time, at that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear an ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to bless in his name unto this day. So any other historians out there, why would the Levites be in charge of the tabernacle? 
if they're like not part of the Israelites. When I would I'd imagine the Israelites, the Abraham, uh, Jacob, uh, Isaac, and Jacob, or whatever, would be like more in charge of like the most important parts of like the the, the rituals. So any 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 historians out there, any insight as to why the Levites are in charge of the tabernacle and not counted as Israelites, just seems strange to me. And I stayed in the mount according to the first time, forty days and forty nights, and the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also, and the Lord would not destroy thee. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, take thy journey before the people, that they may go in and possess the land, which I swore unto their fathers, and to give unto them. God's requirements of Israel. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul? to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heaven is the Lord thy, Lord's thy God, the earth also, with all therein is. It all goes to one person. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, <laughs> and be no more stiff-necked. <laughs> that's actually a funny, that's, that's a funny analogy. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. <laughs> that's actually funny. Don't be stiff-necked no more. Don't be stubborn. Don't be resistant to change. Change your behavior. For the Lord your God is God of gods, the Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. And so this is where, again, when they say God is terrible, again, it's some sort of patriarch in the Jewish tradition. Again, as a, we have this concept of Aaron, God, not Moses is Aaron, but of a really intelligent person. Now we're just spreading it through the God of gods, the Lord of lords. But every tribe, every the, the Jebusites and the, and the Hizzites and the Amorites, and so they're all just, again, aware of really intelligent people forming traditions. And so that's what is occurring. But when he says a terrible, the actual uh, of profound intelligence would be fair, but they wouldn't be, like, terrible. They wouldn't be, like, jealous or, like, vengeful in a way. Again, like, I can't speak for another human being from 50,000 years ago, but there's, a certain, again, a, a certain level of maturity. Like, you can't behave like a piece of shit. And so, in common laws, it's just common sense. So... A terrible to me indicates some sort of patriarch, not oh, not a lesser well-known scholar or translator, um, somewhere in, again in the Israelite tradition, or somewhere somewhere between uh, Jacob or Joseph in Israel or in Egypt to to to, to Mo Moses' time frame. Eh, well, what, well before that, it would have to be well before that. Yeah, but when they say a terrible, that strikes me as something that isn't the, 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 uh, a really the, the really intelligent person from ancient history. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Love yea, therefore, the stranger, for yea were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God. Him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave, and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God, that hath done for these, the, these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with three score and ten persons, and now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. God's great acts. Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and keep his charge, and his statutes, and his judgments, and his commandments alway. In you, in no yea this day, for I speak not with your children which have not known, and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm. God, remind the kids of punishment, and his miracles, and his acts, which he hath did in the midst of Egypt unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and unto all the land, and what he did unto the army of Egypt, and unto the hor their horses and their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you, and how the Lord hath destroyed them unto this day. And what he did unto you, again, is that could have been a, a, a rainstorm that, again, just a, a low running, the Red Sea's low, and then the rainstorm comes and wipes them out. Again, but obviously not. I, I put absolutely zero, clearly zero into like any sort of mysticism. It's just storytelling. Exaggeration. And what he did unto you in the wilderness until ye came into this place, and what he did unto Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up in their households and their tents and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of, the, of all Israel. 
but your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. And it would also be pretty useful to have a, just, a, I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't know the climate of the Israel region. Or just like what damage temperatures, if, if this is any sort of getting just natural disaster attributed to helping, helping destroy the Egyptians. The land of milk and honey, the Milky Way, El Camino, Way, Lule, the milk. Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong, and go in, and possess the land, whether ye go to possess it, and that ye may prolong your days in the land, which the Lord swore unto your fathers to give unto them and to their seed, a land that floweth with milk and honey. For the land, whether thou goest in to possess it, is not as the land of Egypt, from whence ye, ye came out, where thou sowedest thy seed, and wateredest it with thy foot, as a garden of herbs. In the land whither ye go to possess it, it is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven, and a land which the Lord thy God careth for. Thy eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it, from the beginning of the year even until the end of the year. God, re reason is God is always watching. Reason is always watching. Inconsistency will always have consequences. God will send rain and harvest, and it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in this, his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn, in thy wine, and thine oil, and I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside, and serve, no, serve other gods, and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, unless ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Love the Lord. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. Use good reason, use good judgment. And ye shall teach them to your children, speaking of them, when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by thy way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon thy doorposts of thine house, and upon thy gates, that your days be multiplied, and the days of your children, and the land which the Lord swore unto your, your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you, to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto them, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. So you follow my commandments, we're going to conquer a bunch of shit. Bamo, bamo. Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. From the wilderness of Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he hath said unto you. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing, if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, a curse, if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. Bruho. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord thy God hath brought thee in, in unto the land, whither thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Jerizim, and the curse upon Mount Ebal. Are they not on the other side Jordan, by the way where the sun goeth down, in the land of the Canaanites, which dwell in the ch champagne over against Gilgal, besides the plains of Morai. For ye shall pass over Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you, and ye shall possess it, and dwell therein. And ye shall observe to do all the statutes and judgments which I set before you this day. Destroy places of idol worship. These are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it, all the days that ye live upon the earth. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names out of them out of that place. Ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God. Yeah, I'm against destroying history pretty much regardless. Sacrifice in a place chosen by God. 
but unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there, even unto his habitation, vibration, shall ye seek, and thither thou shalt come, and thither ye shall bring your burnt offerings, and your sacrifices, and your tithes, and heave offerings of your hand, and your vows, and your free will offerings, and the firstlings of your herds, and of your flocks. And there ye shall eat before the Lord your God, and ye shall rejoice in all that ye put your hand unto, yea, in your households, wherein the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Ye shall not do after all things that we do here this day, every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. Ye shall not do after all the things that we do here this day, every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. Everybody has the ability to ration and reason. For ye are not as yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. But when ye go, ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, and when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about, so that ye dwell in, dwell in safety, then there shall be a, pla be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Tither shall ye bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tis and your, the heave offering of your hand, and all the choice vows which ye vow unto the Lord. So you can choose some vows, you can make some promises. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord, maybe like a New Year's resolution. Before the Lord your God, yea, and your sons, and your daughters, and your manservants, and your maidservants, and the Levite that is within your gates, for as much as he hath no part nor inheritance with you. Take heed to thyself that thou offer not thy burnt offerings in every place that thou seest, but in the place which the Lord shall choose in one of thy tribes. There thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings, and there thou shalt do all that I command thee. Notwithstanding thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. So you can eat whatever you want. The unclean and the clean may eat thereof as of the rubuck, and as of the heart, H-A-R-T. Only ye shall not eat the blood. Ye shall pour it upon the earth as water. So he has more dietary restrictions for how to eat cleanly. Holy food eaten in God's chosen place. Thou mayest not eat within thy gates thy tin of thy corn, or of thy wine, or of thy oil, or of thy firstlings of thy herds, or of thy flock, nor any of the vow, thy vows which thou vowest, nor thy free will offerings, or heave offering of thine hand. But thou must eat them before the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, thou and thy son, and thy daughter, and thy manservant, and thy maidservant, and the Levite that is within thy gates. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God in all that thou puttest thine hands unto. Take heed to thyself that thou forsake not the Levite as long as thou livest upon the earth. Food eaten in the gates. When the Lord thy God shall enlarge thy border, he hath promised thee, and thou shalt say, I will eat flesh, because thy soul longeth to eat flesh. Thou mayest eat flesh, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Okay, it's kind of like a moral imperative saying it's okay to eat animals. All, right, all the things that are on the earth are good, but this is a biological ecosystem. We, you know, all the animals rip each other apart. If the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to put his name there be too far from thee, then thou shalt kill of thy herd and of thy flock, which the Lord hath given thee, as I have commanded thee. And thou shalt eat in thy gates whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Even as the rubuck in the heart is eaten, so thou shalt eat them, the unclean and the clean shall eat of them alike. So what, what part of the body is the roebuck, R-O-E-B-U-C-K? And the heart, H-A-R-T, I'm assuming that's just the actual heart, H-E-A-R-T? Only be sure that thou not eat the blood, for the blood is, like, is the life, and thou mayest not eat the life from with the flesh. So maybe not even a dietary restriction, just ritual. Just the you know, saying, you kill a deer and you smear the blood on your face. Just don't eat the blood out of the respect for life of another animal, probably. More so than, I don't know, is it diet, again, I could probably look so, is it dietary to eat blood at all? I don't, I don't, I don't think, I like, like I said, I don't think we're eating no bloods, but who knows. Yeah, just quick Google, a quick Google would solve that. Thou shalt not eat it, thou shalt pour it upon the earth as water. Thou shalt not eat it, that it may go well with thee, and with thy children after thee, when thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Only the whole, thy holy things which thou hast, and thy vows, thou shalt take, and go unto the place which the Lord shall choose. And thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings, 
and the flesh and the blood upon the altar of the Lord thy God, and the blood of thy sacrifices shall be poured out upon the altar of the Lord thy God, and thou shalt eat the flesh. Observe and hear all these words which I command thee, that it may go well with thee and with the, thy children after thee forever, when thou doest that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord thy God. Be consistent. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before, from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How do these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hath, hath it, have thy done unto their gods. For every, even their sons and their daughters, they have burned in the fire to their gods. So many children sacrifices, that's what makes them the most wicked of all the peoples, actually killing their kids. So that, maybe that was the test with, uh, with Abraham, with Abraham and uh, Isaac or whoever Abraham's kid was. It's so like, these other nations, they actually sacrifice their kids. So we're going to see if you're a savage enough to sacrifice your own kid. Oh, no, I'm not going to kill my own kid for a uh, mythical ritual. So maybe, that, maybe that's a differentiating cultural, culturalistic factor here, sacrificing their own kids. It might, might have some historical tie again, the, the story of Abraham being told to sacrifice his kid and then not. It's just a way to, like, again, not, not, there was no mythical person called God telling Abraham to sacrifice his kid. Just Abraham going through his own, or just, maybe even just a story. Um, but I think that might be a differentiating thing of this wicked group or that wicked group is maybe they're not uh, sacrificing their own children. Thou shalt not, thou, thou shalt not do to the Lord. Yeah, there we go. Of what things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add, add thereto, nor diminish from it. False prophets to be destroyed. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign of or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, wherefore he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust thee out of the way of the Lord thy God, commanding thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. If thy brother and the, the son of thy mother, or the, thy son, or thy daughter, or thy wife or of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. Namely, of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shalt thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones, that he die, because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from, all, from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear, shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. Don't stray from tradition, or else will die. Israel to destroy adulterous cities. If thou shalt hear say in one of thy cities, which the Lord thy God hath given thee to dwell there, saying, Certain men, the children of Belial are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which ye have not known. Then shalt thou inquire and make search and ask diligently. And, behold, if it be truth and the certain thing that such abomination is wrought among you, thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly and all that is therein, and the cattle thereof with the edge of the sword. And thou shalt gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof, 
and shalt burn with fire the city, and all the spoil thereof, every wit, for the Lord thy God, and it shall be an heap forever. It shall not be built again, and there shall cleave not of the cursed thing in thine hand, that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger, and shew thee mercy, and have compassion upon thee, and multiply thee, as he hath sworn unto thy fathers. When thou shaken shalt hearken to his voice, to the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep all his commandments, which I command thee this day, to do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord thy God. If do what is right, yeah, I would never happen. Self-disfigurement prohibited. The air the children of the Lord your God. They shall not cut yourselves, nor make any boldness between your eyes for the dead. Between your eyes. You, you have to have a unibrow? Nor make any baldness between your eyes? The only hair between your eyes are eyebrows. So you have to have a unibrow? <laughs> That's lit. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. And so there's a lot of nations, and we're just talking about the local neighborhood with the Jebusites and the Amorites and the Hesitites and the whoeverites. Wait a second. Wait a second. Self-disfigurement prohibited. Cut, you shall not cut yourselves. What about the foreskin? Regarding clean and unclean meat, thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. These are the beasts which ye shall eat, the ox, the sheep, and the goat. Cows are good, sheeps, I don't know, did I have sheep, goat? I don't know if I had sheep and goat, but definitely cows. The hart, and the roebuck, and the fallow deer, and the wild goat, and the pie guard, and the wild ox, and the chamois. Chamois, chamois, I get another striking as a French word, chamois. And every beast that parteth the hoof, and the cleaveth the cleft into two claws, and cheweth the cud amongst the beasts, that ye shall eat. And we've already gone over this. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the cloven hoof, as the camel and the hare and the coney. For they chew the cud, but divide not the hoof. Therefore they are unclean to you. Rabbits are pretty common food, at least in the wild, wild west days. I have never don't know about camels. And the swine, because it divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud, it is unclean unto you. Ah, definitely eat the bacon. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. Spelled wrong. These ye shall eat of all that are in the waters. All that have fins and scales shall ye eat. And whatsoever hath not fins and scales, ye may not eat. It is unclean to you. So fish are fine. Birds. Of all the clean birds ye shall eat. But these are they of which ye shall not eat. The eagle, the ossifrage, don't know what that is, and the osprey. It's like the ostrich type of osprey. I've heard of osprey before, but I don't know what it is. And the gliddy, no idea, and the kite, and the vulture after his kind, and every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the nighthawk, and the cacao, and the hawk after his kind, the little owl, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gear eagle, and the cormorant, and the stork, and the heron after her kind, and the lapwig, and the bat. And every creeping thing that flieth is unclean to you, they shall not be eaten. But of all clean fowls ye may eat. Ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates, that he may eat it. So you can't eat it, but you can give it to that guy. Or thou may sell, sell it unto an alien. Look! You can sell it, you can sell it to an alien. <laughs> For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see a kid in his mother's milk. An alien just made a person from a different land, not the actual, the actual aliens. Laws regarding tithing. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. What does tithe mean? Not sure. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to, to place his name there. And tithe of thy corn, and of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds, and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money, and bind up the money in thy land, and shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Secure the bag. That's secure the bag. Build the wealth. 
And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, for whatsoever the soul desireth. And thou shalt eat therefore before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. Yeah, sounds like wealth is a super bad thing. Have whatever you want. And the Levite that is within thy gates, thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. So why are they taking the tabernacle? It seems, it seems like it would be a, a high role in this society. At the end of the three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tith of thine increase the same year, and shalt lay it up within thy gates. And the Levite, because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come, and shall eat and be satisfied, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all thy work of thine hand, which thou doest. The year of release. At the end of every seven years thou shalt make a release, and this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth aught unto his neighbor shall release it. Every seven years, that's pretty generous. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it is called the Lord's release. Hear that, Mom? You're supposed to, you're supposed to loan people money and abide by your your words and your contracts. Of a foreigner thou mayest exact it again, but that which is thine, which thy brother, thine hand shall release. So you can still charge the foreigners. We, we, we're going we're to release the debts amongst our own people, but you can still charge that guy over there, those aliens over there. We can get them. Save when there shall be no poor among you, for the Lord shall greatly bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it. Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all these commandments which I commanded thee this day. For the Lord thy God blesseth thee, as he promised thee, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow, and thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. And so in the tr tr Jewish traditions, like being stingy or keeping your money, I mean, it's, it's clear it's clear you should build up your money, but I don't see how, see how. Anyway, that's particularly Jewish. Everyone should build up their money, secure the bag. Help for the poor man. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thy heart, or shut thine hand from thy poor brother. But uh, thou shalt open thine hand wide unto him, and shalt surely lend him sufficient for his need in that which he wanteth. See, Mom, I need to be able to pay my gas bill. You should respect your, your financial agreements. Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of release, is at hand, and then I be evil against thy poor brother, and thou givest him not, and he cry unto the Lord against thee, and it be sin unto thee. Thou shalt surely give him, and thine heart shall not be grieved when thou givest unto him. Because that for this thing the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy works, for all in all that thou puttest thine hand unto, for the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor, and to thy needy in thy land. And so again, if you, you cross the line enough, you're just going to be killed, but past that, just be a pretty good person. The Hebrew servant, and if thy brother and Hebrew man or and Hebrew woman, see Hebrew, not Jewish, be sold unto thee, and serve thee through these six years, then in the seventh year thou shalt let him go free from thee. This is my seventh year. This is my seventh year of active derivation without constitutional rights and direct violation of the Declaration Con Declarational uh, Human Rights Statement. This is my seventh fucking year. And when thou sendest him out free from thee, thou shalt not let him go away empty. Thou shalt furnish him liberally out of thy flock, and out of thy floor, and out of thy winepress. Of that wherewith the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, thou shalt give unto him. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee. Therefore I command thee this thing today. And it shall be, if he say unto thee, I will not go away from thee, because he loveth thee in thine house, because he is well with thee. Then thou shalt take an A-U-L, old, and thrust it through his ear unto the, unto the door, and he shall be thy servant forever. And also unto thy maidservant thou shalt do likewise. Interesting. So you can, if you like being a maidservant enough, if your quarters are well enough, your quality of life is good enough, then you get branded on the ear and you're a slave forever if you don't want to leave after seven years. Kind of, kind of interesting. It shall not seem hard unto thee when thou sendest him away free from thee, 
for he hath been worth a double hired servant to thee in serving thee six years, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all that thou doest. Herds and flocks, all the firstling males that come out of thy herd and of thy flock, thou shalt sanctify unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work with the firstlings of thy bullock, nor shear the firstling of thy sheep. Thou shalt eat it before the Lord thy God year by year in the place which the Lord shall choose, thou in thy household. And if there be any blemish therein, as if it be lame or blind or have any ill blemish, thou shalt not sacrifice it unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt eat it within thy gates, and unclean, and the clean person shall eat it alike, as the roebuck and as the heart. Only thou shalt not eat the blood thereof, thou shalt pour it on the ground as water. Observing the Passover. Observe the month of Abib, and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of the Egypt by night. So if it's in the month of Abib, maybe maybe the calendar. So I'm still, still scratching my head as to why Passover is like April. It's in the first month of the first, like the 14th day of the first month. So maybe, maybe it's just a different calendar then. So this is like, I don't know when the month, month of Eve is. Thou shalt there, therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God, of thy flock and thy herd, in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction. For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt for all the days of thy life. So eating unleavened bread is just a remembrance of, of suffering in the desert, take it as. And there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coasts seven days. Neither shall there be anything of the flesh which thou sacrifice the first day at even, remain all night until the morning. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in, there thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at even, at the going down of the sun, at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. And thou shalt roast it and eat it in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt turn in the morning and go unto thy tents. Six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day shalt be a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work therein. Observing the Feast of Weeks, Seven weeks shalt thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. You know, our, our calendar to base up harvesting schedules. Very common for different cultures as well. And thou shalt keep the feast of the weeks unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of free, willing, free will offering of thine hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God, according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son, and thy daughter, and thy manservant, and thy maidservant, and the Levite that is within the gates, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are among you, in the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to place his name there. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe and do these statutes. Observing the Feast of Tabernacles. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. After that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine, and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy son and thy daughter, and thy manservants and thy maidservants, and the Levite, the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are within the gates, thy gates. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose, because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase, and in all thy works of thine hands, Therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and the Lord, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. Appointment of judges and officers. Judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes and they shall judge the people with just judgment thou shalt not rest judgment thou shalt not respect persons thou shalt not respect persons neither take a gift for a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise don't take a bribe and pervert the words of the righteous gotta watch out for the bribes that which is all altogether just shalt thou follow thou that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Neither shalt thou set 
thee upon any image which the Lord thy God hateth. Certain abominations of worship. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish, or any evil favoredness, for that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. If there be found among you within any of thy gates, to which the Lord thy God have given God giveth thee, man or woman, that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgressing his covenant, and hath gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun or moon, or any of the hosts of heaven, which I have not commanded. And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquire diligently, and, behold, it be true, and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought in Israel. Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which hath committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones till they die. Two witnesses needed. At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. But at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. Got to verify your evidence. Got to check out the story. And it's still, it's still scarily small. Like how many people are on juries today? But two people says you surely did it. Three people said you surely did it. Oh, you're going to die. That's going to go wrong. <laughs> the hands of the witnesses shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterwards, the hands of all the people. So thou shalt put the evil away from among you. Again, five, five minutes alone in the room with the, with the brothers of the girl you raped to death or something. And then the whole congregation jumps in and stones you. So I'm going to end it there, probably around 40 minutes to an hour. Now, more redundancy. And clearly, just a different author saying the same type of law, same history. And we have about 10 more pages left in the Torah. So this will be either be... We'll finish this up next time, the rest of Deuteronomy, or maybe in two videos. So again, not much to say in terms of history or analytics. Again, some geography I'm not sure of. Um, there's one or two points I forget that I thought were interesting, as I said, as I read them. But just kind of redundancy of tradition. Oh, but the circumcised, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. was fucking funny. But then saying, you know, it's no self-mutilation, but you cut off the foreskin is kind of just <laughs> inconsistent. So not much to say for analysis, but just working through the read-through, just a storybook of a, of a history of a people. So there you have it. Thanks for watching The Real BBC. See you on the next one.